about terrorism. I see the headlines in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the LA Times every day. It's a full court press, and not just here, but all over the Western world. In fact, not just the Western world, in India. Bullying, saying we need to arrest people that don't vaccinate. We need to take their driver's license away. We need to have the IRS find them now that it's over Obamacare. And here's the latest article out, Time Magazine. Unvaccinated families, addresses should be made public. Like you're a child molester. Just like they try to do concealed carry gun owners, who statistically have the lowest crime rate in the country, lower than off-duty police officers, the second safest group. Not bashing the police there. It is the concealed carry. Look it up. Unbelievable. Here's Newsweek. Andrew Wakefield, father of the anti-vaccine movement, responds to the current measles outbreak for the first time. And what they'll do is they'll take a prominent, intelligent doctor, scientist, or the food babe who's talented and smart and a good spokesperson. They'll pick them, try to destroy them, claim that they're a hoaxer, claim they're a liar. A lot of people like Brian Williams do it saying it's been proven that Obamacare doesn't, you know, have a death panel when it does. And then they'll say this person's been discredited when they haven't been. They engage in hoaxes, saying that we're engaged in hoaxes, saying safe and effective. There are no problems when there's a secret vaccine court and they've paid out billions of dollars in the last 30 years to keep people quiet. And it's happening all over the world. And the inserts say it can make you sick, say it can give you Guillain-Barre, say it can give you neurological disorder. I'm looking at the MMR shot right here that's got the measles in it. Diabetes. This is what it says on the back page in the reactions and side effects. Endocrine system, diabetes. Digestive system, pancreatitis. And it goes on. Right down here, measles-like rash. And then it goes on to say that if you take it for 60 days, you shouldn't be around anyone because you can give it to people. It says 60 days. This is from Merck, MMR, right here. So incredibly frustrating. And now we have top scientists in the CDC, in Merck, in these big companies coming out and saying, yeah, we... Covered up the link to autism. See, they're the ones that covered it up. Not Andrew Wakefield. Now you think about that. Folks, they took his medical license in England. His associate that was a co-author just got it back and was just exonerated last week. But it's in the back of a few British newspapers. British court throws out conviction of autism vaccine MD. Andrew Wakefield's co-author completely exonerated. Andrew Wakefield's lawsuit against the author of what I think is a quack study by a journalist saying vaccines are totally wonderful and Wakefield engaged in deception with no proof. That's what they do, or they build a straw man. They build a straw man. Like MSNBC saying, Alex Jones says kill police, and they show no clip because it's a you-know-what lie. Starts with a D, but I'm not going to say it on air. It's a lie. These people, you think Brian Williams is bad? You think he's bad? That's nothing claiming he got shot down in a helicopter and he was an hour and a half away. That's nothing compared to getting up there on television like Rachel Maddow's done and like uh, Megyn Kelly has done and said, listen, Wakefield's totally discredited. There's nothing wrong with vaccines. It totally protects you. Get the shot. It's wonderful. That's a lie. And they demonize Jenny McCarthy, anybody that tries to stand up. And then if we don't stand behind the leaders when we investigate them and find out that they were heroes, not villains, then they can take us down. See, that's, that's what it's all about. If they can take down the icons, they can take everybody down. And so we're going to go for the rest of the hour, a little bit in the next hour, uh, to Dr. Andrew Wakefield. I just want to exhibit here uh, briefly uh, for TV viewers that, I mean, I'm showing you the MMR vaccine insert that came with it. We got it at Walgreens a month ago. And it, it just says measles, uh, uh, don't be around somebody for 60 days if you have it. It can give you diabetes because you have pancreatitis. Then if your pancreas doesn't turn back on, you got, you got diabetes. You got type 1 diabetes. I mean, it just says it. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm reading it. This is so shocking. We've gotten emails and calls saying, oh, it can't say that.
people cannot believe this. Now, let me just show you a few other articles, and we're going to go to our guest. This is out of Time magazine. In Germany, a better vaccine for politicians. Turns out they get a secret vaccines that don't have all the additives and that are higher standards of quality. No one with the right minds debating that the science of this artificially learned immunity doesn't work, but it has side effects. And if these companies are exempt, then you're going to cover up. I mean, imagine an industry that was exempt. It'd be a nightmare, and it is. And they don't want to fix their industry. They want to destroy people that stand up for public health and do their job and follow the Hippocratic Oath. And I'm not kissing his butt, but instead of people carrying him on their shoulders, he's had to put his life back together again. And they could do that to anybody. Continuing, government to get special swine flu vaccine. Another headline. Flashback, UN halts Syrian vaccination program after dozens of children die. German Chancellor ministers get special vaccine. Eat it up, CBC, Greenpeace, others, Monsanto, cafeterias do not serve GMO. Do not serve it. I mean, I can just keep going. Now, I just want to tell you, we, we've got major whistleblowers going public. Everything's imploding on them right now. They're about to have congressional hearings in Congress. That's why they're doubling down again on Fox News demonizing this man. And then they can demonize all the millions of parents that have brain-damaged children. And they can demonize all the adults and veterans that have got serious medical problems from their vaccines and tumors growing out from the injection sites. I mean, it's a nightmare. Because these people are divorced from reality. Just like Bayer got caught and convicted 12 years ago in French and uh, Australian court of knowingly shipping out Factor Eight filled with hepatitis and HIV to millions of hemophiliacs. And, and there were corporate minutes where they said, so what? We're shipping it. Just didn't care. It was a death sentence, a long, horrible death. And Bayer didn't care. Now, are you mad at them or are you mad at Brian Williams? No, let's not get mad at Brian Williams. Let's just say Dr. Wakefield's the bad guy. So he joins us here, uh, his colleague exonerated. I want to give you the floor, try to shut up. I'm just so excited. Walk through your colleague by the British court, where your lawsuit's going. These huge whistleblowers coming out, the British studies that they'd suppressed years before you did yours, you weren't even aware of them. Recap for everybody, we're going to skip this network break. This is a public service announcement. Call your friends and family, tell them to tune in right now, because this is probably killing more people, in my view, than cigarettes. And, it's, it, it, it's, it's, and we need clean vaccines. We need good drugs, but we don't have them. Dr. Wakefield, again, we salute you for your groundbreaking work. Uh, and, you know, Galileo said that the earth wasn't the center of the world and they locked him up for the rest of his life so we haven't gotten to that level though they've been trying and so so we appreciate you alex thank you very much it's great to be back i think you're absolutely right what we're looking at is a system that is in meltdown right now and they're in meltdown for a number of reasons you can only sustain a lie a falsehood for so long and now that dr william thompson senior cdc scientist has come forward and said that they have known for 13 years that MMR vaccine is causally associated with autism and they have hidden it from the public, from doctors, from public health officials, from everybody. They've kept it to an inner circle of people who knew the truth all along and have allowed millions of children to be put in harm's way in the interim. And he could no longer live with that and he's come forward with that now. And one has to hope that that goes before a congressional committee sooner rather than later. And if I have one message for your listeners and your viewers, it is that you must implore that your congressman take this very, very seriously and support Congressman Bill Posey's efforts to get this before a committee just as soon as possible. Looking at this now, uh, they're doubling down. It's like we're Jews in Nazi Germany that we don't want to get vaccinated. Arrest us, publish our names, where we live, come after us, take our children. Uh, I mean, they're really doubling down. Oh, it's desperate, isn't it? And, and it's rather like Salem, or more recently, as you point out, it's rather like banning the Nazis, banning Jews from using public transportation in order to avoid being contaminated by suspected infection. I mean, it's absolutely disgraceful. Oh, that's what they said. Yeah, you're right. So we're seeing that kind of reaction now to uh, what's happening. And it's very well orchestrated. It's heavily funded with billions of dollars of public relations fund, and it's failing. It's failing it is because failing. it's a lie. And if you have a vaccination policy in this country which mandates 
which takes your children away, which puts you at gunpoint, which puts parents in prison for not vaccinating. That is not built upon public trust or confidence. That is a disaster. And public health policy, vaccination policy requires the confidence of the public, and they have lost it. Wow, this is epic. Think about it. In America and Europe, they're trying to make vaccines forced, and they're coming out with hundreds of new ones where companies lobby, and then government says it's the law to take it. They tried to have Rick Perry a few years ago run the hoax of saying it was the law with the Gardasil. I mean, there's no, there's no end to the depths. And as you said, I'm here following and I'm here talking to the public. They're doubling, tripling down. It is backfiring. But it shows this totalitarian instinct that now permeates government. Yeah, that's the notion of treating or protecting children against serious infectious disease with safe and effective vaccines is a laudable one. We, we both recognize. I want them. Absolutely. But the current schedule, and certainly MMR, meets none of those criteria. None at all. And uh, we have a major, major problem. Let me characterize this. Um, there are measles outbreaks apparently now in California and elsewhere. MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, does not protect against measles. Measles vaccine protects against measles. And the only recommendation that I have ever made in respect of MMR, is to give them separately and delay them so that you have a, an interval between each vaccine. That's what the Japanese have done for 20 years. Well, the Japanese are an extremely good example because the Japanese had MMR. They don't want a bunch of brain-damaged children. When MMR came in in Japan, there was a dramatic rise in the incidence of autism. What they found is that the vaccine caused meningitis, the mump strain of the vaccine caused meningitis. Public confidence was lost and the vaccine was stopped. And the, vac the uptake of, of the vaccine and the decline in the use of the vaccine exactly mirrors the rising and falling incidence of autism. Now, what happened next was that there was a rebound, a dramatic rebound in the incidence of autism. It went up, skyrocketed. Why? They never used MMR again. But what the vaccine policy recommendation was in Japan was to use to give children at 12 months the measles and rubella vaccine on the same day and to give voluntary mumps vaccination not less than four weeks later. Now that, in many ways, is still giving combination viral vaccines. So you're recapitulating the same problem that you have with MMR. Now, the kicker is, Alex, that the single mumps vaccine, the one that caused meningitis, when it was given on its own, caused little or no meningitis at all. It was when it was put into the MMR that there was an unacceptable level of meningitis. What does that tell us? It tells us that you get a novel, unexpected, adverse event associated with the combination vaccine that you did not get with the single. There and you studied this. Uh, Dr. Blaylock, uh, who's coined a lot of terms that are now in, in mainline medical journals, says that there's a basically an adjuvant effect of mixing them together. It, it, it just makes them many times more powerful. Uh, Mixing them or what is it? It certainly alters their behavior. And this was recognized as soon as they were put together. It's called viral interference. And they were concerned that it influences the protective immune response. There was no concern whatsoever, except amongst the Japanese, about safety. No concern. You cannot take three live viral agents and put them into combination and just expect that one and one and one equal three. They don't. They and I saw they're now coming out with some vaccines they are flooding and have as many as 10? Yes, now they, well, they, for example, with the live viral vaccines, they put in the chickenpox vaccine. When they did that, it doubled the rate of febrile convulsions. There again is a classic example of more is not better. But these inserts say they can give you convulsions. So, so, so why are we being attacked when the insert says all this? I wonder how many patients or parents actually get to see that insert. Uh, Alex, I wonder how many people ask for it, and I wonder how many doctors spontaneously show it in, as part of the informed consent process. Very, very few. Well, we told folks that there were some tips on to win the lottery in here, or maybe fantasy football, they might read it. But, I mean, if I was going to put any drug I want to put in my body, I don't care what it is, antibiotics, uh, anything, I go read the insert. You want to know what's in there? This is just crazy. And for those that don't know, each vial of the MMR or any other vaccine or drug in the box with it, by law, comes this. So they have this at Walgreens at CVS. I think parents need the choice. They need the choice. In the presence of the current concerns about the safety of MMR vaccine, they must have a choice of how to protect their children against infectious disease. You well, I know you're here warning people you know, as a doctor and you know, trying to save folks, but, but tell us about 
your story, recapping it briefly, where it is, where your lawsuit is, your co-author being exonerated. Um, I know you're moving towards that. You've been exonerated with the whistleblowers, the previous studies. But this has got to really hurt the people that tried to destroy you uh, as just fate would have it. All this evidence pours out. Well, Alex, I've been in this 20 years now, and that's a <laughs> feels like many, many lifetimes. But we listened to parents who said that my child was perfectly normal. I'm not anti-vaccine. I took my child to get vaccinated. When I did that, they got the MMR and they regressed into autism. And uh, they also developed gastrointestinal symptoms. And as a physician interested in gastrointestinal disease, I recommended those children should get investigated for that. They were investigated by the world's leading pediatric gastroenterologist at the time. Professor Walker Smith, who you've just mentioned, my co-author on the paper, and he found that they had an inflammatory bowel disease. We treated that disease. Not only did the bowel disease symptoms improve, but the behavioral and autistic symptoms improved. It was the beginning of a fascinating journey. But we had to investigate whether the parents were also right about whether the vaccine had precipitated in this. That's when the problem started. And so Murdoch's uh, brought his team of journalists along, Brian Deere. They came up with this extraordinary story uh, that we had involved ourselves in fraud and deception, that we had made it up, there was no ethical approval, all of this kind of thing, while at the same time holding back from the General Medical Council inquiry vital documents that showed there was indeed ethical approval for this study. He knew throughout the investigation and the proceedings mm. that he had in his possession key documents that was an obstruction of justice. Have you ever physically been around this guy? I, if I was you, I, I bet you get angry. I get angry, but, you know, um, it's it's not about me. It's not about me, Alex. No, I know, but, I mean, this guy's trying to cover up what's going on with children. He's a despicable character, in my opinion. Yeah, one thing I cannot forgive him for is the damage done to the children, because now we are many, many years on, and because the bowel disease in the minds of many was synonymous with vaccine injury, that had to be declared a fraud as well. Because people were getting such good results in slowing or reversing it, God forbid we get a treatment for this. That's right, and the trouble is that all of those children did not get investigated because doctors were terrified of doing the right thing, terrified of looking after their patients properly, of treating these That's right. Trying to destroy you was meant to scare everybody off before this got further investigated. But go back in. It turns out there have been some other studies that you didn't know about that had found similar things. Yeah. Now, uh, there have been studies from Canada, from uh, the, the Far East, from here in America, confirming that beyond a doubt, these children have a novel inflammatory bowel disease in many cases that is amenable to treatment. And the key is not to walk away from the fight, because if you walk away from the fight, other doctors are just going to have well, look, no yardstick by which to judge what they should do. I know you have to be very careful in science, uh, even going off other studies and things, because they'll take what you're saying out of context and claim, oh, he's saying this, oh, he's saying that. But when I have Dr. Uh, Blaylock on, who's a famous brain surgeon and, you know, wrote major papers on endocrines and on so many other things and excitotoxins. I mean, in the inserts, I'm no doctor, but I can sit here and read all the things that this does. I know I worked for a large animal vet for a year, a small animal vet for three years uh, in high school. And they would say, tell people, don't vaccinate your pet every year. It's causing them to have convulsions. It's causing them to have allergies. It's causing them to have diarrhea. It's causing them to die. And so they've kind of got the laws changed now where they vaccinate every three to four years and animals are in a lot better. Though the lobby's coming back trying to say every year now. So it's, it's the same thing. So I was... 15, 16 years old, listening to Jess Adkins, the large animal vet in East Texas, you know, saying, you know, these vaccines have got some problems. So, I mean, I remember hearing about that. But if I read this insert for the MMR shot, Merck & Co. Inc., uh, White House Station, New Jersey, when I sit here and I read this, it says diabetes, pancreatitis, uh, Guillain-Barre. I mean, I mean, it says all these neurological disorders. It says it can kill you. I mean, it's, it's just page after page in Bible paper. It's super thin uh, saying all the stuff it can do. Measles like rashes. So w w as best we can tell, what is it doing? It's causing an auto, a, a autoimmune thing, an inflammation in the pancreas, in the intestines, in the brain. What's happening, doctor? Well, just come back to the point you made. The vets were way ahead of the curve. The vets recognized these problems and dealt with them far, far sooner than, than medical professionals have. And they took the thimerosal, the mercury preservative out of vaccines, many years before it was even considered to be taken out of human vaccines because they recognized that it was doing harm. And as you say, they spaced the vaccines out because they recognized they were give, be, the pets were being given, given too many vaccines too frequently.
So if only we took a, a, a lead from the vets, we wouldn't necessarily be in the same position we are now. Now, how is it working? Well, I think there are many, many ways. And the trouble is, Alex, by the time we see these children, they are so sick and their systems are so deranged that it's very difficult to say what happened first. Tracing it back to the first thing that went wrong is very, very difficult. But certainly the immune system is very much disturbed. There is an autoimmune component. The body turns upon itself. And so I think it's in large part an immune-mediated disease that affects not just the brain, but the rest of the body systems as well in many cases. So poison ivy is an autoimmune issue. Um, AIDS is when your T lymphocytes are gone and you lose uh, the programmer cells, I guess. Um, I mean, as best I've, from all my years of researching the medical literature, it just seems like it's causing a serious autoimmune disorder. I've also seen a lot of uh, reports linking Crohn's disease that's really expanding and growing and, and spreading uh, to people that have been vaccinated. Yeah, we, we, well, that's where how we got into this initially, looking at measles vaccine and Crohn's disease. Uh, and we still don't know the answer on that because these diseases are so complex. Causation is not simple. But we know they're exploding right now. We absolutely know that there are epidemics of these immune diseases which are seen in the most highly vaccinated populations of the world and are far less common in those children That's right. on getting the lower rates of vaccination. We'll be right back with Dr. Andrew Wakefield. I'm Alex Jones. Well, I think you're, you've characterized it very well. This is a, a do or die moment. It's absolutely crucial in the history of this country and indeed the world of who prevails. Who do your children actually belong to? And if we do not get uh, William Thompson before a congressional series of committees that unearth the precise nature and extent of the fraud at the CDC and how they... That's are, the big whistleblower. That is the big whistleblower. Then if we do not do that, and if we lose this battle, your children, you will be owned by the pharmaceutical industry and your children and your children's children. Slavery. And they are simply a marketplace for those companies. They are quantified in terms of vaccination for every birth in how much revenue they will generate for the pharmaceutical industry in a mandated program for which there is no real recourse to any kind of compensational litigation if your children are harmed. So they want to take away your rights as to whether your children should be vaccinated or not, according to your decision. But if your child is harmed, and vaccines are, according to the Supreme Court, unavoidably unsafe, then you are left to pick up the pieces. And that is the system that we face. And at the end of it is a massive profit for the pharmaceutical industry. Now, the way to do this, Alex, is to get your congressman to support Bill Posey. And you must do this. It's no good sitting there. So we've made it easy for you. Go to the autismmediachannel.com and on there... There are 30 pages of complaint that I have written with Dr. Brian Hooker, which characterize precisely the fraud committed by the CDC, based upon the documents provided to us by William Thompson, the whistleblower. And those documents must be put in the hands of your congressman so that they know exactly what happened, and then they can give Bill Posey his support in getting this to committee. That's right. Highlight them, go to their offices or when they're back in your state, and give it to them. Hold them by the hand and say, listen, kids are getting hurt. You read this fraud and get up off your butt. And here's the thing. Those, those congressional, uh, uh, they're in the recess next week. So they are coming back, many of them, to their district. You can go and meet them in your district. You don't have to travel to D.C., but you make sure that every congressman in this country is aware of exactly what's going on. Because at the moment, pharma lobbyists are scaling Capitol Hill like orcs storming Helm's Deep. It's a hideous sight. And even though... The you can see they're huge offensive. I mean, this is, this is, this is battle of the bulge. I mean, they're throwing everything they've got. And this is a matter between Congress and a congressional agency or a federal agency, the CDC. It shouldn't involve the pharma lobbyists at all. The, the congressman should have the trust to say to them, this is none of your business. You may be indirectly affected by the outcome of this, but th this is between us and a federal agency that has committed an alleged fraud. So get out of my office and wait for the result. Well, think about with government-run health care that's run by special interest and written by it, they can just make us buy whatever, quote, health products they want, including tainted vaccines. This is super high-tech slavery. I mean, this is over the top. Yeah, so please go to autismmediachannel.com, download those PDF documents, and get them in front of your representative. 
do not hesitate. Next week they will be back in district and they will be available to you. So make it happen. Because if we lose this battle, we lose it for a very, very long time. Elaborate on how, where's the lawsuit going, how your colleague, the co-author, super prestigious. I mean, I looked him up, like you said, one of the top um, you know, gastro experts uh, in uh, the UK or Europe. That's why they were so scared of you guys and had to shut you down because you're smart, well-spoken, prestigious, getting results, helping people, had to be destroyed. Uh, but they failed. You came back like the Phoenix, and that's so exciting. So, so break down where that fight's going right now as well. Certainly, let me start with John Walker-Smith. When the GMC rendered their opinion and had a, their decision and had us struck off the medical register in the UK, both Dr. Professor Walker-Smith and I filed an appeal. And I did not get funded for my appeal. It would have cost me about 500,000 pounds, which I didn't have, to fight that appeal, so I had to withdraw my Because they his. destroyed your livelihood. That's right. His was funded, and he took it to the High Court. This was the first time it had ever been in front of a proper judiciary. The judge, Justice Mitting, destroyed the GMC, destroyed them. He essentially accused them of being incompetent, unable to, uh, incompetent, unable to handle evidence. They did not know how to, they were, he accused them of being biased. They rejected evidence that was valid. They had no idea what they were doing. Yes, they did, actually, because they were doing it deliberately. Well, they were setting you up. They had been given their marching orders, and they were going to get a guilty verdict, whatever. And at the end of it, counsel on behalf of the GMC admitted said, we're sorry, we know dis uh, our mistakes were made and we didn't handle this properly. And the, and the judge said, it would be a shame if this were ever to happen again. You go away and you change your whole process of conducting these fitness to practice inquiries. So it was demolished. However, they got what they wanted and that was taking my license away. And now autism rates have gone, I mean, I mean, they vary. The highest are in South Korea, correct me if I'm wrong. It's like, like 1 in 30-something. It's 1 in 50-something here now. It was 1 in 68. It was 1 in 25,000 30 years ago. I mean, I can see the children when I'm at the grocery store or I'm out in public. Kids aren't looking too good. Uh, and the babies aren't looking. And, I mean, you go to a movie theater, sometimes the thing is just full of autistic children God bless her little hearts, you know, babbling uh, and, 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 and just going through hell. And I go to doctor's offices sometimes, to, you know, take my children to the pediatrician. And I'll be in there and there's like 15 kids and like five of them are autistic. I mean, this is an epidemic. Is it going to be one in 10, one in five, one in two? I mean, how long will this go? How many? I mean, does half the population have to be sitting in the corner in diapers, cussing when they're 15 years old, screaming at their parents before we do something? I think the way to look at this, Alex, is look at the CDC's own numbers on this and look at the trend over time. The uh, it's, it's now what, as you say, around one in 50. If you extrapolate from that and you look at the risk for autism for a child born today, it's one in 25. And it's estimated that by what, 2025, it'll be one in two children will have autism if nothing is done about it. And that is completely, the situation now is completely unacceptable. But that will be a disaster. No economy in the world can sustain that kind of attrition of its population. So... Something has got to be done immediately. Well, yeah, something was done. Have, have you read Eco-Science, written by the current White House Science Czar? I have not. It's pretty interesting. Um, they uh, talk about social engineering through, through uh, medical systems, water and vaccines to uh, get people in line. It's pretty, pretty interesting. It was written by, they think there's too many people, Paul R. Ehrlich, Annie H. Ehrlich, and John P. Holdren. And uh, this book is digitally online for free they try to pull it down when people find it because it's pretty uh, shocking this was basically adopted by unesco as a global shadow policy uh to uh, carry out social engineering through medicine right well keep an eye on your copy alex i might have to steal it before i go well you can borrow it you're certainly welcome to thank you but the, uh, you know and the other issue is what happens? Okay, there are two elements to this there's the epidemic that's occurring now and then there are the children who are already damaged what do we do about those children as they age out and they become adults. As you say, sitting in diapers at the age of 15, 20, 25, uh, unable to cope, unable to deal with themselves. And we had a tragic case here in Austin the other day of a young man who was in a group home in the district, in the community, and a simple thing happened. I think someone stood on a DVD of his, he had a meltdown, he went running around the district, knocking on doors, and he was shot four times, shot to death. 
That these people cannot cope in the community. They have no idea. Yeah, it's scary when a 25 year old autistic man's at your door, yeah. and we're sad he got shot. But I mean, it, it, and then cops are shooting them all the time too, because you get some guy running at you screaming. I mean, it's yeah. and nobody understands the problem. This is the problem. The people out there in the community do not understand what autism is, or that these individuals have no sense of danger whatsoever. So, what are we going to do with all of these autistic adults? And that's. A tragedy, and someone here in Austin, uh, Polly Tommy, is creating the Autism Trust to provide a long term home for these individuals where they won't be drugged. They won't be simply put on psychotropic medications which have no indication in autism whatsoever but make life easier for the carers. That's I think I are. met him out in Lakeway. It, Polly is, uh, you probably met her husband. Husband, yeah. The husband and, and wife team. And He was showing me all the stuff they're going to build the campus. Pretty amazing. Absolutely, that's right. So, um, it's, it's an exciting time for people here in Austin, but one of these places is not going to be anywhere near enough. You could deal with, you could have 10 or 15 in Austin alone, let alone the rest of Texas or the country. Well, I know a lot of personal friends, some quite famous people as well. I mean, you'll be on the phone with them and, you know, their kids in the background going just over and over again screaming at them I mean, for hour after hour after hour. I mean, it is, I, I couldn't think of a way to debilitate a society better. You know, they came up with a 223 to just wound people in Vietnam because they found that would debilitate the Vietnamese if they had to have five people take care of somebody who was just wounded instead of dead. Well, that's what this is. It's like a walking dead. I mean, they're just walking wounded. It's incredible. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I would jump up with energy. I would run out there, and I would try to get the child out front of the car. Because I've done that before. You know, been on the highway, and a car flips. People are stuck, and we help get people out. I'm not a hero. I saved a lady one time with a Heimlich maneuver, came out of the bathroom. No one was helping the lady. She was turning blue, falling over on the table. They just kept saying, call 911, call 911, call 911. And then I went over there and she coughed up all this bread and people thought I was a hero then. That's why we're in so much trouble. Is that it's not heroic to do the right thing to help people. And the instinct to, to stand up against tyranny has been lost to a great extent. Everybody needs to go to autismmediachannel.com, get the data, send it to Congress, get involved today. Because there is a war going on and we need to mobilize against Big Pharma and the social engineers that are engaged in this. We need to take action. And I got to tell you, Dr. Wakefield, uh, your partner's been exonerated. You don't have the money to go through the process. You were saying during the break, they should just, you know, exonerate you, but they don't want to step down that far and admit that they're that wrong. But what are they going to do as the vaccines just keep ravaging everyone? They're going to lose this fight in the end. Well, one thing I want to talk about, Alex, one of the most insidious problems with this is that uh, I was sent a seventh graders test the other day, standardized test for seventh graders across the country. And it said, 10 years ago, a doctor wrote a paper. He made it all up. And since then, we've all been much sicker. And then there were a series of questions that these seventh graders had to answer, which went along with that notion that there was fraud, it was all made up, that children weren't being damaged, that vaccines weren't causing problems. And here's the problem, that you had to give them the answer they wanted. So to pass the test, you had to comply. And to comply, you had to lie. And that is the poisoning of young minds. That is what the Nazis did in schools to alienate school children from foreigners, from the Jews. Uh, they called them foreigners. How many aliens, they say, lived in this country? Auslanders. Absolutely extraordinary. And that same thing is happening now in schools. And if you do not give them the answer you want, they want, you will fail the test. Well, that's Common Core. That's exactly what they do. Uh, they'll have questions like, guns are killing more people now. How do we stop it? We ban them. And they're just putting brainwashing directly into the tests themselves. It's outrageous. It's incredible because, you know, it, what that will do is self-select those people who are compliant, not the people who think critically and ask questions and say, no, actually, I've read differently, or my child, my, sorry, my, uh, my sibling, my brother or sister experienced this, and I know that vaccine damage is a real problem, fail, out. Look at this article. McDonald's gives free vaccines with Happy Meals in Texas. Would you like a hepatitis A shot with your Happy Meal? Anthony Gucciardi, uh, and it's out of Amarillo.com, is the original article. Can you believe that?
And do, and do McDonald's give informed consent at the same time? Do they hand them that product insert and say, here are a list of the problems that you could have with this vaccine? No, I don't think they do. No, of course they don't. It's absolutely disgraceful. These things are being treated like candy. And these are viral agents or, you know, sort of mutations of viral agents or extracts of viral agents that have a known downside. And yet they're being given in McDonald's in what exchange for a Happy Meal? Absolutely incredible. Well, instead of getting a toy now with your GMO Bill Gates uh, garbage, you know, he's on the board uh, with those folks. Instead, you now get a loving vaccine on top of it. We'll be right back with the final few minutes with Dr. Wakefield. GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Dr. Andrew Wakefield has been exonerated by CDC whistleblowers, Merck whistleblowers. His colleague, one of the top uh, gut experts in the UK, just exonerated after years of battle. And the court absolutely eviscerated uh, the government agency that engaged in this uh, quackery. Uh, it, it's just amazing what's going on. So the fight is joint. He is exonerated, but the word isn't out on that yet. You're making a new documentary. You have another documentary that has been very successful, winning at film festivals. It's now available. Tell folks about the film. Well, I decided some years ago, Alex, that to beat the media, you have to become the media. And you've made that decision yourself, I'm sure, many years ago and get the message out there. And we have so many extraordinary stories that I've learned over the last 20 years from these parents that it was time to tell those stories. And the one that we produced is a film called Who Killed Alex Bordelakis? It's a tragic tale of a child in Chicago with a 14-year-old with severe autism who was ult ultimately killed by his mother and his godmother. His, yes, his godmother. Um, now, we started filming them as a way of showing how these children could be helped but he fell foul of a medical system which was totally and utterly inadequate. This is a system that put this child on over 25 psychotropic drugs, only two of which are licensed by the FDA for the treatment of children with autism. Only two. So this is quackery. This is true quackery. And it's where the way that this system is going, and that's got to change. So the story highlights one of the most poignant and distressing aspects of of the way in which this country now handles children with autism. And we made it in order that this should never happen again. These parents should never have been put through that. Well, what about with all the bioethics talk? Now, they're talking about just getting rid of uh, people that have um, any type of um, mental disability or whatever, warehouse them, death panels. Uh, I mean, I think when you once you get to one in ten people with autism, I'm not saying do this, but it'll be, I mean, we're going to collapse. We won't be able to take care of all these people. And the state's going to say, kill them. You know, the moment that you consider any individual member of a society expendable, then you have lost your moral compass. And that is exactly what is happening at the moment. And it's being done because market forces are dictating that that... What did you think of the secret death panels that came out with the VA? And they just swept that under the rug, too. No, I just heard about that for the first time from you. See, it hardly even got coverage. Can you believe an IBM computer decides... Who shall live and who shall die? Yeah, that happened in Nazi Germany. And people say, quit using the Nazi analogy... 
it's it's dead on though yeah no it's it, it's a very very good historical yardstick for so many of the things that can go wrong in society if bad people get in control and good people do not act to restore the integrity of that society so it is a very good yardstick and it it's entirely appropriate to use it well i got called aside by my children's pediatrician who runs one of the biggest clinics in, in austin he's retired now this is like six, seven years ago, and he said, listen, I get why you're not vaccinating your kids, uh, because you know, he has one of those big clinics where he, where he won't push you to, but most of his kids go in there, do get them. He goes, I volunteered for a clinic, you know, doctors are supposed to do that for folks that don't know. In, in, in East Austin, we were giving them live polio vaccine. That's supposed to be illegal for 20 years. He goes, it's got SV40. And he goes, but he grabbed my arm, and he goes, but you don't tell anybody my name. And, 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 but I mean, wh that's how scared doctors are. Yeah, they're terrified. And the, the, what happened to me was has now become um, Wakefielded. They call it Wakefielded. It may even get into Wikipedia, you know, of, of, of this phenomenon of isolating doctors, destroying their credibility and saying to everybody else, if you get involved, if you question vaccine safety, if you criticize our drug, this is what will happen to you. Do you remember that Merck Vioxx trial in Australia where they produced the, the, inter, the, the internal emails for executives talking about how they would deal with doctors who criticize They said them. isolate them, destroy them, yeah. uh, kill them, I think. Well, you may have to seek them out and destroy them where they live. And when yep, yep. Matt Lauer asked me about this in interview, he said, well, what you're talking about is really conspiracy theory, isn't it? And I said, well, it's interesting that you should say that, Matt, because this is what came out in Australia in the Vioxx trials there. And it sounds a little more like corporate policy than conspiracy theory. Doesn't sounds it? like mafia to me. We salute you, autismmediachannel.com. Folks, get the film. We salute you. We support you. God bless you, Dr. Wakefield. Thank you very much. I tell you, uh, this is amazing.